following is a paid program. The opinions expressed are not necessarily those of WNBU and Interbanks Media. Money. Welcome to All Things Money with David Blaine, a thoughtful and revealing discussion of actionable ideas and effective strategies to help you through the complex world of investing, taxes, and real estate. Now, with All Things Money, here's David Blaine. Hello and welcome to All Things Money. I'm your host, David Blaine. Thank you for joining us today. Whether you're tuning in on 94.1 FM, WNBU, cable TV 10 in New Bern, or streaming our show from the internet, www.dlblaine.com. We welcome you. We thank you for all your input over the years. We get some great ideas and comments from our viewers and listeners. If you'd, be, if you'd like to be one of those that provides input to the show, we'd love to hear from you. Our phone number is 252-633-0107. The email to reach the show is allthingsmoney at dlblaine.com. And, of course, you can go to our website, www.dlblaine.com. There's a big Contact Us button. you also find information about myself and my firm and a wonderful um, knowledge center that we have archived copies of all of our TV and radio shows as well as articles that we've written over the years. It's a great wealth of information. If you've got a question on a certain topic, just go to the search box, type it in, and it will bring up all sorts of multimedia ways to uh, learn about different topics so we welcome everybody out there last week's show we spent we actually recorded on election day as we all know by now president obama uh, was re-elected and i did the show all on on the tax laws tax provisions that depending on who was elected uh, may or may not come to pass so if you missed that head on over to our archives on dlblaine.com and pull up last week's show and I go through about 14 or 15 different tax provisions that are part of this, um, some of the tax laws that are in flux right now. And I outline what I think is going to happen based on who wins. And so now that we, we know who wins, you can kind of figure out where, where we're going on that. Uh, as things develop, this is going to be a busy, busy end of the year and probably bleed over into the first part of 2013. So stay tuned here and we'll keep you updated on all the latest tax developments and what they mean for you, both as an investor and as a, as a taxpayer. There's a lot of changes that are coming. Um, today, I wanted to start off with talking a little bit about the sell-off. As soon as uh, President Obama was elected, starting the next day, November the 7th, we had quite a sell-off in the market, and it's kind of continued. Um, there's a lot of anxiety out there, and I thought it would be useful to, number one, reiterate why things are, people are selling and, and markets are going down. And number two, uh, let's put that in perspective and talk a, lo a little bit about um, whether that's a smart thing or not. So here's a, here's a couple things that affected the markets last week and, and on into this week. Obviously, the election, um, it was uh, a, a close enough race going into the election that a lot of people we're taking short-term tactical bets on a Romney victory. Uh, even though the overall probability of, an, uh, of a President Obama being reelected, if you looked at um, the polls and one of my favorites, something called Intrade. If you haven't checked this out, you should check it out. It's Intrade.com. And I, I forget exactly who started it, but it's, uh, it was part of a university project. And it's um, in a department that works on prediction. And their theory was that the markets, um, in a free market where people have the ability to uh, pay money and based on their views and to profit from their views, that it would lead to uh, very good predictability of things. And so you go on there and you can, you can buy, for example, the Obama-Romney. You could place a, essentially placing a bet on you know, President Obama winning or President Romney winning, and you could actually put money to work. And based on, you know, the number of people putting money on President Obama or Romney, the, the price goes up and down like a stock. So it's kind of like a stock market for different um, things out there that are happening. And elections has been one of the most useful uses of it. Anyway, so in trade, uh, always had Obama ahead most of the polls, but 
if there was a chance that Romney had to win, some of your traders out there that make their money based on large bets against sort of the flow were out there putting money to work. They were betting heavily on large banks. Uh, the Dodd-Frank reform that was passed by the Democrats and signed by President Obama has been awful for the big banks. So a lot of people were buying big banks and running the price up in hopes that Romney would be elected it should be a big benefit to the banks. Uh, number two was defensive stocks, the risk of sequestration with the re-election of President Obama and the Republicans holding the House is significantly higher than if um, you had uh, a Republican president. So people had bid up defense stocks. They'd also bid up coal stocks had jumped sharply. So when it became evident that President Obama was going to win, all those names sh sold off very sharply. And of course, banks are a fairly decent percentage of the market financials, and so that was one of the big reasons. Number two is the fiscal cliff. As I've reiterated on the show many a times, the impending expiration of some $600 billion worth of tax cuts. Well, the, the way the tax law is structured now, if the law goes into effect, taxes will go up by about $600 billion in taxes, spending, um, automatic cuts to Medicare, automatic cuts to defense spending that will arrive in January 1st. Uh, you know, people were pretty much preoccupied with the election as far as who wins and, you know, who controls the Senate, things like that. Well, now that it was decided, you know, all of a sudden this laser focus now is on this fiscal cliff and people just sort of started to panic. Uh, people that are afraid that the fiscal cliff is going to be the doom of, you know, the United States and the whole global financial system is going to collapse. Well, a lot of those people are, are selling out. And so that has led to some of the market decline. I think that's probably the most significant is people now are starting to focus on it. Um, as I've said before on the show, about every two months, uh, the whole Greece, Europe thing flares up. Uh, you know, the Greeks are rioting, striking, whatever, uh, asking for another bailout from the other Euro countries. And then, you know, they have some vote and it sort of subsides. Well, the election, our election coincided with another sort of flare up in Greece and Europe. And so that also contributed to um, the sell off. For those market technicians out there, uh, the S&P 500 also breached a key uh, technical level, the 200 day moving average. It's a, an average price of the last 200 days. And when the current price falls below that 200 day average, a lot of your technical traders that rely on these type of signals um, exit the market. And so there was just a lot of selling pressure uh, for a lot of these reasons. Um, what was very unusual though, the market was falling, but the VIX, um, the volatility index really did not spike up a lot. So that's kind of a good sign um, that it may be temporary. Well, that's all the time we have for the first segment. When we come back, we'll continue talking about the election and the recent sell-off in the market. For All Things Money, I'm David Blaine. <laughs> 